what is going on comic fam it is your boy the bearded comic bro and i am joined by comic creator justin richards welcome to the show what's up how's it going man it's going well so you are you are the brains behind the hit comic from vault uh finger guns and i adore it and i can't wait oh. to talk to you about it so um thank you yeah i'm so, so thank glad you, to hear taking it. this time <laughs> oh my pleasure thanks for having me before we get into finger guns though the first question i always ask anyone that when they're dealing with comics here is i gotta know how did you get into comics yeah um so i kind of like had a late resurgence into fandom of comics i started reading you know, like seriously again in about 2014 2015 and that um that just I really took off once I found like indie comics particularly like a lot of strong image stuff was coming out around then you know that was early days of Wicked and Divine mm -hmm. and you know uh, Saga was going strong Bitch Planet was coming out like lots of great books to just discover just from image alone and then you yeah. discover a bunch of others so uh from there me and a bunch of friends started a youtube channel and started reviewing books we did that for about three years and then felt like dipping my toe into the creator side of it and got lucky really hmm. kind of knew the right people at the right time and you know they liked my pitch nice so <coughs> excuse me so is finger guns your first foray into comics then it is yeah first real foray into any serious writing other than like some poetry here and there um but yeah this is like the first story i took a real crack at so how did that process then how did going from you know being on this side of the camera being a youtuber talking to creators reviewing comics where did how did that switch then from that to writing a comic book your first comic book for vault yeah um i mean i just started getting the itch and so, so i started thinking about like okay if i was going to do a comic what would it be about and i kind of came up with a blank for a while and then i had a weird dream where i could affect people's emotions using finger guns and then there was like another kid that could do the same you know and i was in like middle school is what it felt like and so I just kind of woke up and was and wrote it down as something and wasn't sure where to take it. And I started working with one of my friends. Uh, her name's Sabs Cooper. Uh, you'll see her name uh, is in the credits of the book as mm -hmm. a co-creator. She was involved very early on um, with helping me kind of figure out what story I wanted to tell with this. And then, yeah, we just kind of went from there and uh, I wrote I worked on it for like two years, just writing it. I wrote out all the scripts ahead of time. Don't do that because <laughs> you end up rewriting them all. But uh, yeah, I I really, really tried to like have it all done basically. And then uh, I would became friends with all the Vault guys, uh, Adrian and Tim in particular, I, I gained strong friendship with early on from reviewing their books uh, when they first launched. And so we were all gonna be at a show together and I just sent Adrian an email ahead of time and was like, what do you think of this? And then he's like, let's talk about it at the show. And it went great, so. That's so cool. So man, knowing knowing the right people at the right time and having a great idea. Um, and so let's let's hop into Finger Guns and let's, so we kind of got, we kind of already got a preview of how the idea came about. Um, yeah. but if someone is watching this interview and for some odd reason has not read finger guns yet, um, first off, so, watch the interview, but after the interview, go read it. But if they've not <laughs> read it yet, um, what's the pitch? What's the storyline behind finger guns? Yeah. Um, my elevator pitch was always, uh, two kids from like troubled backgrounds or well, troubled home lives, mm. uh, discover that they both have the ability to affect other people's emotions using various finger guns and then like friendship and uh trouble ensue yeah um i mean that's ultimately 
exactly that's, what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's the real base, like the the surface level right. uh, observation of it. It's hard to pitch the book. Like one of the harder things about this book is that it's it's you know, and this maybe sounds like a humble brag, but like it's pretty unique uh, conceptually. It doesn't fit into like a particular genre very well, and it it's very hard to market it without spoiling some of it. So, yeah. but basically, it'll be it's a it's a deep dive into emotional maturity yeah. and you know discovering that emotions are something that even with powers you can't play with, you know, yeah. and it has dire consequences. And yeah, yeah, it gets I, dark. I, I... <laughs> it is, and I want to. I want to get to that um, here a little bit. Of you know, your you know, you gave the elevator pitch of like this is what it's about. You know, it's people, with, but you definitely tackle a lot heavier topics. Like that's the that's yeah. the tip of the iceberg right up there. That your elevator pitch. You go into some deep conversations and deep topics about you know, like you said, trouble at home, love, suicides, and abuse and things like this these are heavy topics and totally. and especially with teenagers why why was it important for you to tell the story um you know with this basis of finger guns with the emotions but with then the understudy of these topics that are so heavy what was what was the importance for you of creating this story with that kind of there oh, that's a great question man um i would say you know and it was kind of I almost lucked into it a little bit because the way that my initial like dream concept of it happened, I really felt like it was a middle school level, like that's what it, it felt like in the dream. But, um, you know, if you, when I, when we, me and Sabrina sat down, me and Sabs Cooper, uh, and like started figuring it out, we were like, what age are these kids? And it changed a couple of times actually. Um, and it became because, you know, um, as we were figuring it out and Sadie clearly had an abusive father, yeah. um, exploring that and what a kid with emotion powers would do with that, you know, because I, you know, I, not to get into details and bore anybody, I grew up with my fair share. Mm -hmm. of of that kind of abuse and um you know I thought about what I would do and you know or like how I wished there was something I could do and you know as a kid you feel completely helpless in those situations and so I just felt like it was a topic that I having that experience could explore mm -hmm. from like the right perspective and uh it was a story that I felt like I could tell because of the experience I had with it and I felt like if I was a kid I would totally have appreciated a story that explored it because yeah. it's something that's very hands-off to a lot of people yeah well I think that's interesting because I know we talk about you know the importance especially what we see in indie comics where they take the step to really to have representation in comics about where stories that people can relate to and you know to have a comic that is a story that someone who might be dealing with these things or going through it, especially, you know, a young reader going like, this is something I can relate to. I think that's more, you know, cause you get the dynamic of, you know, sometimes the adults in the books not understanding the emotions and dealing with the emotions and stuff. And so I think that's a really, um, I think it's an important aspect when it comes to, like you said, of your storytelling to, to allow kids and young readers or even someone else, you know, not, I said kids or teens, but you know, adults who are going through stuff like that to have those emotional. Um, totally. I mean, this book is a, when you write, you know, a lot of times it's cathartic for the writer, you know, and so a lot of this book is me working through my own shit, you know, yep. sorry if I'm not supposed to curse. <laughs> yeah. You're allowed. Cool. Yeah, uh, it's that, you know, it's, you know, there's a bit of me working through my own stuff. I mean, um, Wes, our other main uh, protagonist in the book, he has a different kind of broken home where his mother passed when he was young, which, you know, luckily I have not experienced that, but um, his father is kind of absent and mm -hmm. is more focused on his career and 
you know, you find out eventually that that's not because his father doesn't care. His father does love him, but he doesn't know what else to do other than just provide and go to work and do the most work that he can. And it leaves Wes alone a lot and it makes him lonely. And uh, in my high school years, um, you know, my stepmom got a job for the first time in my childhood and my dad and her both worked nights. And so I was home alone a lot. And I, I thought it was going to be really dope. And it was here and there, you know, yeah, you know, you stay up a little later than you're supposed to, or you eat more snacks than you're supposed to or whatever. Right. right. But at the same time, every once in a while you come home, you're like, man, there's no one here to talk to and like no one to tell about my crappy day from school or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I, and I think that's a beautiful part of what you do in the storytelling is you see, you know, this, I even think the line is in one of the stories of like, well, the grass is always greener, you know, as I say, yeah. people look at that perspective sometimes of like, oh, how great that would be to not have the rules and the regulations and how some are like, man, I just, I would crave for that connection or something. And you know, we don't know the people's situations. I think that's a, a strong takeaway that you don't know what everyone's else's situation that they're going through in life. Totally. Like, yeah, I wanted to express that with them of how, you know, Sadie having an abusive father would love for her father to not be around, right. uh, honestly, and to just be free to not feel like she takes a lot of uh, her family stuff on her own, on herself. She, she places a lot of burden on herself. And um, whereas Wes, you know, n before knowing that her father is abusive the way she is, he would probably love the idea of having two parents at home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, it's not until you really know what's behind the surface of everything that, you know, neither of them have the best situation. Right. And so they both actually kind of need each other at that moment. Yeah. And I, I think like your writing um paired alongside of uh, uh Val's art like this how how was it like this creative Val team like, this was this was this is a fantastic book from story but the creative team you know all around was dynamite on this what was that experience like for you oh uh super easy <laughs> <laughs> uh I'll like if you want to have what you know what feels like success for an indie book with your first book man like getting the right artist can be so key because Val, I, like, I couldn't imagine this book being drawn by someone else mm. anymore. You know, Val just was a perfect fit. Uh, and he took a lot of my like really simple scripting that I, that I do and just turned it into exactly what I wanted it to be. You know, mm. uh, it was super easy with Val. Uh, he and I, rarely like I think maybe once an issue there was something I had to like give him some extra explanation on what I was looking for and otherwise he just took off and made it look dope and then same thing with Rebecca Taylor like Rebecca just killed it every time like every page she turned in we're just like yeah perfection thank you you're awesome and same thing with Taylor like just they all made life really easy for me as a first timer and so I was very lucky and very blessed to have such a good creative team. Now, was this, was this kind of like when you got connected with Vault, they kind of had like, here's some people that are available or was this through connections that you had with them or kind of a beautiful marriage? It was, of a, it was kind of a mixture. Um, I did pitch finger guns without an artist attached because, right. you know, I had, I was a no name, no, like, you know, I didn't really have a lot of sway to like jump in someone's DMs and be like, hey, draw this silly uh emo finger gun book with me <laughs> um so it wasn't until I got like the verbal agreement with Walt that I really started looking because I had that extra layer of like hey yeah. this book is picked up so right. um I met Val through a buddy of mine named uh Christoph Borgax uh he's another great uh comic book writer and he had worked with Val on a couple of small projects mm -hmm. and I hired Val as a colorist for my zine that I sent you that we'll, we'll chat a little bit about in a bit. And uh, yeah, like I looked at his portfolio and I was just like, this would be a really good fit for Finger Guns. So I sent him like his portfolio and stuff to 
to Adrian. And then he uh, agreed that it was, you know, likely a good fit. So we tested Val by uh, having him do some character designs. And like the first thing he came up with is what you see with Wes and Sadie and it was just perfect. And yeah, then they took care of the rest as far as uh, like, you know, we worked together with like, okay, who are some colorists that you like and letterers that you like? And they were like, you know, kind of matched that. And honestly, like Rebecca's another one where I couldn't imagine the book without her colors. And yeah, I'm so glad that we lucked into her being available at the right time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the color schemes too, like are it just is such a good vibe throughout the book. I mean, I'm just glanced back at those covers. And those colors, those colors know, are actually colored by Val. Are but, they? Uh, yeah, Val wanted to do his own uh, cover colors. He asked if Rebecca was cool with that. And yeah, she was nice. But yeah, but I mean it, the transitions. I think though into the books too, like the colors in the books, like that. Yeah, like, they paired them really well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Rebecca, she was really good. I mean, like a, a lot of people say, colors' biggest job is holding the mood, and boy, does she set a mood. Yes. My favorite is in issue three, we have a mood where, or a scene where like the mood really changes to dark. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I gave a fair amount of direction on what I wanted from that, like, that I wanted like some kind of visual effect for that. But man, she just made it even better than I could have imagined. It was so good. She did these beautiful purples and this glowing red hue. Yeah, so yeah. good. If you haven't, you'll if you haven't read Finger Guns, you'll know exactly what we're talking about when you open up those books. You're like, absolutely, yeah, that's when you can flip through the trade, and then that book, like that page, will you'll what is that? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and well, you just said trade, so you had it was a five issue run. You the trades mm -hmm. out. Um, yeah, is this is this? Are you like ending your run with Finger Guns? Do you imagine more or? I, I have ideas for okay. more, um, but I gotta I gotta wait and see if I if I get to you know. Okay. Uh, so as of, of right now, yeah, this is all this is all that we're agreed to, to yeah. do for now. Um, we'll see. Hopefully, yeah. uh, I have high hopes. Uh, but honestly, like we gotta sell the trade really well. So if you uh, haven't read it. Uh, trades available now and you can pick it up at any local comic shop so absolutely i mean uh by all means you want to read this like if you're not captivated by the story already from this interview i don't know what's wrong with you um but... <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> <Yeah. from anyone. laughs> we do have a lot of like you know we have a lot of fun with the book too that yeah. was something that was important to me was that while we tackle a lot of heavy topics like i wanted to balance it out with a lot of fun right and i think you i think i think even the interaction of like just the you know the idea of finger guns controlling emotion you know and you know to mm -hmm. watch them you know in scenes like in the mall or outside the schoolyard like just practicing people like yeah we we i'm glad you brought that up about there is a lightness too like it, it pairs nicely with like you're going through some deep moments and tough stuff but you do have this nice balance of like bringing humor into the book and making it like like that you're you know and that like those moments of just like fun that you get in that which I yeah think is beautiful because uh, they're kids man and kids yeah. are silly and like when adults see kids do it like you think about the idea of like oh man these kids are like aiming finger guns at people in public and and that's a really weird thing but like if i saw a kid aim a finger gun at me i'd just be like okay that was weird <laughs> and so like yeah like there's a, i thought it would be fun to include a, a fair amount of that where it's just like what is this kid doing <laughs> like <laughs> It is, yeah, it came out pretty well, I think. We ask that a lot sometimes. Where did the, what's this kid doing? Like, what's going on? <laughs> so that's, man, that's, and you mentioned, uh, I, like, I'm, I'm grateful for your time, so I don't want to take up too much more, but you mentioned. I got plenty. Um, uh, briefly, real quick, Silent Night, uh, something that yeah. I got to preview. Uh, 
share a little bit about that real quick. Yeah, so uh, I do have, it's a, a personal zine that I curated, I guess you could say, since I got, it's, it involves multiple artists doing a few different, couple different formats, but uh, it's a zine, uh, so it's about 10 pages uh, that I'm hoping to put out on my website for free for everybody to, to check out because it's something that's really important to me. Um, basically, there's five pages of silent story that explore depression and anxiety through a horror story. And then I over explain it. <laughs> uh, and I partnered with the American or the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, the ADAA, um, basically just to help spread awareness of uh, depression and anxiety. It's something that I've dealt with for a, a long time since I was a kid. And uh, it's only like now that I'm in my 30s that like I've, I feel like I've started figuring it out a little bit. So yeah. if I can help other people <laughs> figure it out, it's important to me. But yeah, um, yeah, I've got a lot of fantastically talented people involved with it. Um, the main story is drawn by Gavin Guidry with Colors by Val, like I said. And uh, I've got um, pinups that reflect the theme of the, the zine from Liana Kangas and Megan Hutchison. And there's actually one that you, that you haven't seen in the preview yet that is from probably the biggest name. Uh, I'll tease you with it later, I'll show, I'll show you. Right. But uh, yeah, it's basically just, a zine that's about depression that's important to me and so I hope people like looking at it and I might if enough people like it I might do a kickstarter for like a physical edition mm. yeah but yeah I and I know you said you made the joke when you're going through that like there's a page of you over explaining me um <laughs> I think there's I, I I appreciated that because as someone who's trying to you know read and sometimes i read a comic book and understand like the understand where the writer is coming from i think there's a lot of uh importance to that and for you know and like we talked about a lot of you know uh, your vulnerability in that letter i think is a great conversation piece for people that can have conversations when they're dealing with stuff and i think that's a um i think that's a very helpful and Im impactful thing when you're talking about something like you said when you're paired with the ada um, uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, yes, yeah, so, so far in my writing, I feel like, you know, if, if I can, I want to help, uh, help people. And the biggest thing that I've struggled with is, you know, depression and things like that. And so if I can help people realize that they're not alone in it, because that's been my biggest thing is, and I think it's very common for people who suffer from mental illness of, you know, they feel like they're the only one. Like, it feels like nobody else has your situation. And to an extent, no one does. But to a large extent, a lot of people do. And I think that's a huge weapon in the fight against mental illness is just knowing that you're not alone. So uh, that's kind of the mission statement of that zine and why I would rather put it out for free for people. It's not very long. Um, but yeah, if people want a physical edition, I'd like to give them that too. So we'll see what, what it ultimately becomes, but yeah, I'm excited to get it out into the world. Uh, follow me on Twitter, um, at emo comic writer on Twitter. Uh, and if you follow me there, I'll be, that's where I'll, I always update everything. So, uh, I'm planning on putting it on my website. Once my website's done, it's the plan right now. Nice. <clears throat> um, so you've got that. You, like you said, trade for finger guns came out. Uh, you got your zine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're working on your website. Is there anything else that you've got kind of cooking in the works right now that you can talk about? Or, um, let's just, I've got, you know, I have a lot of uh, coals in the fire. We'll say, okay. Or irons in the fire. As they say. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> so I'm going to swear I'm a writer. I know these things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's hard, like technically I can talk about them all because uh, nobody else owns them right now. But, uh, you know, without spoiling stuff, yeah. uh, you'll notice behind fine. me, uh, it's really small on the screen, you can't read it. But this is a, a recent writing cue for a new pitch. Just, it might be backwards, but yeah, Destroy nope. All Nazis. 
Um, so look forward to some of that, hopefully. Uh, that's been sent into a very specific publisher that uh, actually requested a pitch from me. So we'll see how that goes. Nice. And uh, I'm working, I've got a mythology story pitch coming um, that I think is going to get picked up really soon. And then I'm currently working on my own original superhero story and universe of sorts. And I have no idea how I'm going to go about making it because I have a lot of specific dreams for it. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see. But it's like this, it's the first and only story I've ever gotten that was like, oh, I have this like three volume plan for this. <laughs> like it just popped into my head where it was like, I could do this and then this and then this and then yeah, so I'm really excited about that one. And I just spent the last like two or three days creating a bunch of new superheroes in my head for this that are going to revolve around stuff. So That's having cool. a lot of fun with it. And I hope, I think everyone I've told about it thinks it's pretty dope. So, and I think it's pretty dope. So good. I mean, listen, <laughs> we're, I'm excited, um, you know, just after, you know, the little bit that I've gotten to read of your stuff, I mean, finger guns, like, I'm so excited to see what other worlds you also tackle. So I uh, appreciate that. It means a lot. So, um, well, again, thank you so much. And um, <clears throat> like I said, he, you said in your interview, follow you on Twitter. I'll have all your links below in the description of this video. Uh, yeah. That way, because I'm sure anything that any big news that posts about stuff coming out, you're probably going to be one of the first to post about it on Twitter and things like that. So, um, yeah. So when you're That's... ready to get all that news. Make sure you guys are following Justin. That's that's where the heat is. The hot <laughs> takes. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, Justin, thank you so much just uh, for taking a moment of your day and talking comics with me. I appreciate it greatly. So, and as a fellow comic beard bro, you know, yes. I had to, I had to do it. You can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say no to the beard. <laughs> so, again, thank you so much. Um, thank you. And appreciate. for all of you that are watching. Um, now that the interview is over, go buy finger guns. Uh, get that trade. Do it. <laughs> and with that being said, hopefully you can find some time to curl up, grab a book, and nerd out. Peace.